Hey everyone, welcome back to She Burbs Podcast. I am your host, Brooke Wright. Hey everyone, welcome back to She Burbs Podcast. Today's guest is Josh. Hi Josh. Hey, how you doing? I'm good. Thank you so much for being a guest on, guest on my podcast today. Yeah, thank you for having me. <laughs> so can you tell our listeners, did mass homelessness always exist? Okay. Um, so no, and we're jumping right in, huh? Uh, yeah. Okay. So <laughs> yeah. So mass homelessness didn't always exist in America. Every country is different. Um, and then uh, actually that's one of the reasons why I made my film is because in the beginning, I was trying to figure out what kind of a documentary I was going to make. This is, I, I worked on the film for 11 years. So this is a while back. Mm-hmm. And, um, and I spent about a year and a half just doing research and just going and just talking to everything from somebody who's first day being homeless to like mm-hmm. a homeless policy advisor to the mayor. Right. And everything in between. Mm-hmm. And I was just recording audio. I wasn't videotaping anything. I was taking notes for, it was actually closer to two years. Mm-hmm. And um, when I started talking to homeless service providers and advocates and people who work day in and out with homeless folks and who are formerly homeless themselves, a lot of, you know, mm-hmm. lived experiences, it's called nowadays, right? Mm-hmm. Um, what I heard was, how come we don't have a documentary film that talks about the origin of homelessness? Mm-hmm. You know, because the old timers, they knew, they were like, dude, we didn't have this until like the 80s. And, and I was fascinated by that because I, I was born in 82. Mm-hmm. And so I just assumed the world was always the way that it was-ish. You know what I mean? Um, mm-hmm. And they were like, no, young blood, like, you, you need to know, like, it wasn't like that at all, actually. Um, right. and, and that's the story that we need told. You know, we have, there was, there's not much on homelessness in general then. There's more now, but still not enough. Uh, mm-hmm. But it's always like, this is the tragedy of this one person's life. Mm-hmm. Or this this person's struggling with mental health and drug addiction, right? Or these yeah. three people are, whatever, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but that's usually the arc of the whole thing. And it's like, do they survive? Do they not survive? Do they make mm-hmm. it out? Do they not make it out? Mm-hmm. And that is a very important part of homelessness to talk about. Mm-hmm. But if we don't look at the fact that it's systemically created, then mm-hmm. we're doing it an injustice. Just like right. if we just like if we only talked about systemic and never just kept it real and talked to people, right? Mm-hmm. So that's a long way of saying the whole reason we made the film is to is to educate people on mass homelessness. So yes. to, that's a very long way to answer your question. But <laughs> no, I, I, love I love it. I love it. I love it. Okay. So um, when it comes to mass homelessness, it essentially pops up. It starts in the late 70s. Mm-hmm. Uh, and um, by 82 under Reagan, it's just horrific. And and the, the thing that's interesting about it is um, – some problems, they seem so big, it's kind of hard to wrap our head around where they come from and what do we do about them. And there's a lot of that. Like, how do we fix racism in America? And how do we do this? Right, right? Uh, homelessness is a, is the result of a direct attack on affordable housing between 1977 and 82. Mm-hmm. And it just plummets 77%. It's just, they're just, they just gut affordable housing by 77%. And then homelessness starts happening overnight, essentially, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and it gets, and every year gets worse and worse and worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. And that's why something that used to be a small thing if you live in the city, at least, uh, is now almost a daily topic, uh, oh, yeah. right? Because we're just seeing this snowball happen. And even when you're creating X amount of units a year, if you're mm-hmm. constantly cutting the feet out of housing, then mm-hmm. it's wonderful to build 10,000 new units, but not if we're losing 100,000. I'm making that number up, but I mean, the, the principle being you can add some, but if you mm-hmm. just keep cutting out the bottom of it, then you're going to watch homelessness increase. So no, it didn't always exist. And that's where it came from. Wow. Well, that's mm-hmm. a long answer. <laughs> but mm-hmm. yeah, I agree with you. Like I had a discussion with the lady at work and she was like, all these homeless people that don't want to work. I'm like, it's not even that. Like you don't know the history behind being homeless. Like mm-hmm. I got, I didn't really get kicked out at 17, but mm-hmm. me and my mom didn't work together. Like we couldn't live together. So I just left and started house hopping with friends mm-hmm. and family and stuff and then Thank ended you. up going to Job Corps. So a lot of people don't know that homeless people, a lot of them have mental illness. Like if you go and ch- talk to them, they have mental illness. They need help and mm. they don't have the resources for them to. I mean, they have it, but they don't want to offer it to them, you know, yeah. because they don't have any money. They don't have an address. They don't have a phone. They don't have anything. So they don't really have any help. And mm-hmm. I really like what you're doing. <laughs> hmm. Well, you know, it's interesting about that, too. There's a few things, right? I always tell people. The homeless population is as diverse as the regular population, right? So are there going to be some lazy homeless people? Sure. Are there going to be incredibly hardworking, lazy, uh, hardworking, lazy, <laughs> hardworking homeless people? Absolutely, right? Mm-hmm. Are there going to be people that are like most of the rest of us, somewhere in the middle? That's mm-hmm. the majority, right? It's not rocket science. And, and, that ex- and, and most, people, most people don't know that simply out of experience, which I completely understand, right? 
Like, mm -hmm. so as a documentary filmmaker, my job is to try to <clears throat> understand everybody and not write anybody off. It's an mm -hmm. interesting lesson to try to constantly remind myself of, right? Mm -hmm. um, Cause it's very easy to be like, well, I'm this and you're that, you know, mm -hmm. I'm liberal and you're conservative or you're that, that whatever it is, right? I'm educated and you're not or some bullshit thing. And <laughs> what's interesting about homelessness is most people that meet somebody who's homeless, they meet chronic homeless people, right? Mm -hmm. And chronic homeless people make up less than 16% of the homeless population, right? Mm -hmm. But that's who everybody, if, if I say homeless, that's who we all think of. And that's our brothers and sisters that are going to the garbage can, talking mm -hmm. to themselves, looking for food, you know, out on the corner all night, da -da -da, right? Uh, there, there's, there's nobody who's more or less important in homelessness, mm -hmm. right? right? But it's important to know that if, if this percentage of this much mm -hmm. is chronic homelessness, well, so we have a, we don't know what we're talking about when we talk about homelessness, right? Mm -hmm. These people need help just as much as all these people do too. But so right. what about all these people? What does that look like? And most people don't know because they've never been into a homeless shelter. But if you walk into a homeless shelter, you can't tell that 70% of the people in there are homeless. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? After a shower, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and so it's a lack of experience. I'm not saying people have to get this experience or have to be that, but I'm asking, you know, people should try to be more open-minded because- mm -hmm. We don't know much about it until we experience it. And then you'll be like, oh, holy shit, I was way off on a lot of this stuff. You know? <laughs> right. Right. So I do have a question it's outside of the questions I was going to ask you, but mm -hmm. are majority of the homeless people um, retired vets or vet people that was in the military and came home? Like mm -hmm. I've heard that the majority of them are. It's a good question. So, no, it's not a majority, but they, they certainly make up the population. Um, there is no real majority in homelessness. Um, and in, another interesting thing about homelessness is, is the way that they count it. Mm -hmm. So when you get your facts and figures on it, they're always underrepresenting the actual amount of population. Wow. Um, and yeah, and there's a practical reason for it actually. Right. Um, but it's an important thing to remember that when we're hearing about homelessness, it's never overestimated. It's always underestimated drastically. Mm -hmm. The reason why, uh, is that when they count homelessness, the federal government, they do it in January, uh, right? And this is called a point in time count, right? And that's where a bunch of well-meaning people like me and you, we go out, we volunteer, we have somebody who tells us what to do. And we have these forms and we do a, I just saw this and I asked somebody questions census. Mm -hmm. So you and me, we walk around out there and we go, okay, there's a tent. And we go, does it look, do we feel safe to walk over there? Yeah, I guess we do. So you walk up and you go, excuse me, folks, we're, we're doing the homeless count tonight. Uh, you know, maybe here's a card, a gift card or something if you're lucky, but, um, you know, is, you know, are you a man or are you a woman? How old are you? Uh, do you not identify as either? Right. Do you this, da, 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 da. where are you from? Are you from here originally? And you ask census style questions. Uh -huh. Um, right. But first of all, that's in January. So have fun. Find it's, you know, it, that may not mean that much if, in Southern California where I'm from, but January mm -hmm. means a lot in Chicago. You know okay. what I mean? So trying to see me find me, I'm homeless in Chicago. You know what I mean? I'm homeless in other places like that, Minnesota. Uh, you're not going to find me. So, Keep in mind that even when they're adding these numbers up, they're mm -hmm. they're not they're, they can't be very accurate because it's hard. It doesn't mean people don't work their butts off to try to do that, and good for them. And I respect everybody who does it, but it's mm -hmm. a stupid system on how to count. I don't have a better one though, so who am I to talk? But just to keep that in mind, um, veterans. The number of the amount of veterans changes uh, depending on who's counting and how they count it, kind of. Um, mm -hmm. But they don't make up the majority because there is no majority. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. That's true. But they're a big part of it. <laughs> so um i do have a question about your documentary so <laughs> so can you tell us a little bit more about it like what what is in the documentary like what do you talk about like the mm -hmm. interview people and everything like mm -hmm. what's what goes on in the documentary <laughs> yeah yeah so um kind of going back to what i mentioned before a little bit mm -hmm. I, I needed to know what how we were going to structure it and mm -hmm. i thought you know you have a lot of well-meaning, well-intentioned people trying to help other people. Mm -hmm. um, but sometimes we don't know how to do that, right? Mm -hmm. And so I thought instead of me imagining what the homeless community might want, I'm just going to go out and constantly talk to them and ask them, yeah. you know? Uh, and what I found out really quickly was if I'm homeless right now, I don't give a shit about a documentary film. You know what <laughs> I mean? I just don't. I don't, All right? right? Um, so then the next thing was, okay, well, so note to self, make sure these screenings help homeless people. How do I do that? We can come back to that because I figured out how to do that and, and they do do that, right? Uh, but then, okay, well, who is this going to help? Is it general audience? Is it service providers in homelessness, right? And it ended up being those, especially homeless service providers, right? Mm -hmm. So I would talk to folks in women's shelters, men's shelters, veteran shelters, right? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, abused, uh, like, a, the, you know, uh, halfway homes, abused women's shelters, everything that you can imagine kind of thing. And, and they said, you know, we, we need to let people understand that homelessness is systemically created if we're ever going to beat it, right? right? We need them to know that housing 
is going to fix it and not criminalizing poverty is going to fix it. Mm -hmm. And so I said, okay, well then that's what I'll make. So that's mm -hmm. how I decided what I was going to make. So the film is, it takes place all across America, right? Mm -hmm. And it's shot over 11 years. And so it kind of swims in and out of different people's lives. Right. Mm -hmm. So like it opens in it opens in um, Denver, Colorado, where homeless people are being kicked out of their tents uh, just after a blizzard. Right. Because oh, wow. they got to go to the shelters. No bed, shelter beds, but they got to go to the shelters. Mm -hmm. Right. And then we go from there and we go to the people that live in the tunnels underneath Las Vegas. There's a whole community of people oh, who live wow. underneath Las Vegas in the tunnel. Right. And then wow. we go to Salt Lake City and we go. And that's a couple. So this is what it's like to be a couple in mm -hmm. Vegas. Right. Uh, older. They're mid 50s. Um, then let's go to let's go to Salt Lake City and let's see what it's like to be in a family shelter. What is that mm -hmm. like in Utah, right? And then we'll go to Washington D.C. and we'll see what it's like to be a homeless veteran in D.C. And we kind of hop around. But during that, we make sure to teach the three big principles, which is that what we talked about already: uh, mass homelessness was created, and mm -hmm. affordable housing is why. So we educate the audience on housing, mm -hmm. right? The second thing is, uh, and ever, and people know this better now, but income inequality. You know, it's destroying America. It's unfair. It hasn't changed since the late 60s. Right. Um, that, and then teaching people about how homelessness is criminalized was number three. That's a really big one because most mm -hmm. people don't understand the cycle of criminalization on homelessness. And I got three tickets. I got four tickets. I got five tickets. And when you apply for a job, you can't get one. And you can't do this. And the amount of money it costs to be arrested, put in the ER, drug mm -hmm. treatment, psychological treatment, mental health issues, uh, housing, all this stuff is crazy. Uh, and mm -hmm. being jailed versus just simply finding housing for somebody you know, regular like SRO style housing. So the yeah. film swims in and out of people's lives in different cities and states, and, you know, while mm -hmm. also educating about the three things that we have to beat to beat homelessness. That's true. So can you tell us about the last one you mentioned? Like, I'm very curious. <laughs> so can you tell us about the last one you men mentioned? You criminalization? Yes. <laughs> sure. So we spend, um, in the film, we go to Skid Row to talk about criminalization with one of the most um, one of the most awesome and radical organizations on the West Coast, which is LA Can. That's the Los Angeles Community Action Network. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of formerly incarcerated people that work there. There's a lot of formerly homeless people that work there, and they're on the, they're they're in Skid Row, and that's where they live, and that's what they where they do their thing, and they mm -hmm. serve the population directly. You know, okay. um, it's kind of a for us by us kind of an organization, which is the best kind, in, in my opinion. Which is yeah. it's just it's just that. Um, and so what we wanted to show, which, which we saw from the beginning is just how absurd criminalization of it is. And we wanted to show it practically, right? You can say this law was passed in 1982 and this was done here and da, 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 and, and whatever, or you can just show people out there going, okay, the police just showed up. They're making everybody break down their tents, right? And they're issuing tickets. So we'll watch you, we'll watch homeless people get tickets mm -hmm. and then they got to pack up and they're going to go three blocks that way. And right. we'll watch police officers don't, don't even really want to do it but they're gonna do whatever they're told, right? Their, their job mm -hmm. is to enforce the law, right? So they enforce the law. It is the law actually, technically. It's a stupid law, but that's their job to enforce it, right? So they're mm -hmm. there. So you have whole squads of people who are trained to interact with homeless people who are there to then write them tickets every day, every other day, uh, and and displace them. And I've had, and off camera, I've had conversations with police who are like, this is fucking crazy to us. Like, yeah. we, like literally all we do is just displace people all day, every three days. And we don't like it either. Like we're doing nothing, but just like at this point, we're just like probably should be social workers, but we don't have that training. We think we're the the hammer and they're the nail. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? When you get a, a candid conversation with a, a police officer off camera. Mm -hmm. So um, that's what we show in Skid Row. We just show them interacting. It gets tense. Like the community is on one side, police officers on the other side. They're arguing about it and this and that and da, da, da. And, we t and then we show... Um, the, the actual cycle where you get arrested here and you go to court here. If you miss court, you get the bench warrant, right? The bench warrant's here. Then you go to that. You go to jail. Jail costs this much money. And then we compare that to not. We also talk about the amount of laws. Like I think it was 661 anti-homeless laws in Colorado, you know, like that kind of oh. a thing. It just all happens in the background and we don't know it. It's not national mm -hmm. news. Um, we talk about how it's like, and these numbers change every year. So I'll, I'll be general here, but you know, 38% mm -hmm. of every city you can't, you can no longer sleep in your car. Right. Oh, and wow. then 44, you can't lay down on the sidewalk and all this stuff. So we're just trying to show that a it's um, practically speaking, it doesn't work. You don't you can't police your way out of homelessness. Right. That's a big one. Even yeah. if you thought you could, you can't. Um, it costs more money to the system, to me and you anyways. It's absolutely less humane and mm -hmm. it's continuously they're creating more laws that didn't exist before. So it's a new thing. It's not something that we're like, oh, we needed this new approach. We just need to walk back the approach of the last 20 years. And that one more like 10 years, but. Yeah, I agree. My issue is why aren't they doing anything about it? Like, why aren't like, <laughs> this is going to sound stupid. <laughs> why isn't no. like 
the president and not, and any of them doing anything about this issue. Like they mm. know it's a huge issue, but they mm. don't do anything about it. Like that's my yeah. problem. <laughs> but, yeah, I um I think about that a lot too, right? Mm -hmm. Um so one thing that's interesting about the them knowing it's a big problem thing. Mm -hmm. If you think about homelessness, and I, and a lot of and I'm coming from the perspective of living in a major city, not rural mm -hmm. homelessness, because it's talked about less in rural areas and it's mm -hmm. spread out and it's represented differently. Mm -hmm. But if we're talking about the cities, it's consistently talked about a ton in cities, mm -hmm. a fair amount in the state, and never at the federal government level. When's the last time mm -hmm. any president said the word homeless? It, I don't I don't yeah. know. And if they did, it wasn't enough to register for any of us, right? Yeah. Um, it's never talked about. It's never talked about. Um, affordable housing is talked about a little bit and so on and so forth. Right. But, um, I, and I think there's a, I think there's a variety of reasons why, um, why it isn't solved. Uh, one of them is it's, there's so many organizations that, like the government is, is a weird thing because it's massive and mm -hmm. completely disconnected from itself in all these different ways. Mm -hmm. So like a policy from like HUD housing and urban development might do this. And then something from the department of justice might do this. And the department of education might do this and they don't work together at all. Mm -hmm. Um, and so they, they have no realistic way to actually do anything if there really was willpower. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and one of the things, is, and then the big thing, if I, if I'm going to opine is that, um, it's capitalism, it's un it's, it's capitalism without enough checks and balances on it. Right. If you make mm -hmm. a lot more money, mm -hmm. not having affordable housing kind of, than if you do, right. Mm -hmm. Let's just keep jacking the rent prices up in every state, force out all the middle-class people and working class people, these places gentrify the shit out of them. They don't even mm -hmm. think let's do it. They just go, let's not stop property managers from doing it. Let's, let's do this. Let's have a burger cost $19. You know what I mean? And it used to be 12 and then it was 13. Then it was 15. Let's have rent double, you know what I mean? Over 11 years. Like let's have, but let's not make minimum, you know, if my rent doubled in San Francisco, which it did, right. Mm -hmm. Then why did minimum wage not double? Right. right because right. it hasn't and because it won't because it doesn't get adjusted for inflation and it hasn't since the late 60s early 70s wow. so i i think what you run into there is um there's there's not enough will to really fix it you have a ton of people who want to who care mm -hmm. who work in organizations mm -hmm. um i just spent a bunch of time a fair amount of time with hud i just worked on a project for hud which is housing and urban development that's the government right yeah. My boss, they're actually my boss on a project that I have. We're wow. discussing uh, formerly incarcerated people, right? We're trying to find ways to help formerly incarcerated people. So I got a, kind of a peek inside looking at HUD. And like I work for departments where they're literally their only goal is to try to end homelessness. But mm -hmm. while that's happening, we're losing 10,000 units a year that already exist within public housing because they don't mm -hmm. get them repaired, right? And so already that's insane, right? That's that's the same as building 10,000 extra a year, right? So you're losing 10,000 a year of already existing housing because it's falling to pieces and HUD and nobody else is fixing it, right? And I'm not right. picking on HUD, but you mm -hmm. have this, there's all these examples of where it won't happen, right? And HUD doesn't, HUD can't step into Congress and say, hey, you know what? Nobody can increase rent more than 1% a year for the next mm -hmm. 20 years. Solve the problem overnight, right? Solve the problem overnight. Mm -hmm. I mean, imagine if housing... Like imagine if your where your rent at your place was half the cost, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? I would be Mine happy. too. <laughs> yeah, everybody would be happy, right? And then you can then you can have social programs and and you know you can have these things. And mm -hmm. then the third thing is they've wiped out. And again, this is kind of the same answer, but they've wiped out all these organizations that used to be like just a little bit more. Like for example, the YMCA's don't house anybody more anymore. YMCA's used to house people. Right? Wow. Um, uh, wet houses used to exist. All right, you have dry houses. A wet house is like. I'm a total drunk. I'm a knockdown, drag out drunk, right? Um, mm -hmm. But but my check, I get $800 a year out of a month out of my social security or whatever. $200 mm -hmm. that gets deducted, and I have this kind of shitty place I can go into. But I have a room that's mine. I can lock the door. I got a bed in there, so I'm not sleeping on the street. Wet mm -hmm. houses were around for 70, 80 years, maybe more. You saw them in the Great wow. Depression all the time too, in post. And then they wipe them out. Why? Because turn let's turn that into a parking lot, right? Or let's make this be uh, a gene color. I mean, who knows what? I'm making the examples up, but but that's what mm -hmm. they did. It became more valuable to profit off those, triple the rents and this and that than it did to maintain them. And they all fell out. So there is no place to go. You sleep on the street or mm -hmm. you create your own community, which is a tent community, right? But that's yeah. illegal in the United States, right? <laughs> yeah. All right? Unless approved by the city. And some cities do allow it. Um, so you're it's it's illegal to be poor, essentially. And if mm -hmm. you it's not legal to sleep in your car because you're lucky enough to have a car, mm -hmm. then how are you not breaking the law? Well, the shelter's full tonight. So you literally don't have a place to go. It's illegal to do anything except for walk around all night long and not mm -hmm. stop. 
You can't mm-hmm. eat in public if you're eating in a bigger group than four in a bunch of these cities. You can't sleep in your car. You're you're breaking the law at every minute. And if you lay down and sleep, you're breaking the law again, and you can go to jail. Right? What? So yeah, because it's, wow. it's against the law. Yeah. So. Wow. I think they gave up over here in Louisville because I live by Churchill mm-hmm. Downs and mm-hmm. it's quite a few homeless people. And I think they just gave up telling them to move like mm-hmm. and people will stop by, give them food, give them clothes, give them mm-hmm. boxes of stuff. So it's it's at least 20 people over there. And I'm like, wow. And they're right by my house. So did it happen I, during I COVID? Yeah. Yeah. During COVID? Did, yeah. They didn't. They didn't let them move or anything like they're still mm-hmm. there. They've been there for like years. Since I've yeah. been here. <laughs> yeah, so, things have changed a little bit during COVID. It's been interesting. Yeah. Some po- yeah. some positive, some negative. <laughs> so yeah. um, I have a question. This is my last question. But mm-hmm. would you be interested in making a documentary about um, like sexual, cult, uh, sexual assault culture or like rape culture or anything like that? Have you ever done that? So I think... So I think two things. We we talk about assault, sexual assault, a little bit in the film. We mm-hmm. it's it's a really important point to make when it comes to women on the streets versus men on the streets. Mm-hmm. It's much more unsafe for women. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. And I spent a lot of time in women's shelters where they gave me permission to come in, right? Which mm-hmm. is always you know, allowing a man to come in, coming. Kind of mm-hmm. And I would set up in the back in a back room or at the ch- if they had a chapel. I would do it, oh. and then the people who ran the shelter, uh, who were always women, of course. Um, would have me sit in the beginning of the day when everybody comes in and say, hey, this is what Josh is doing. I'm going to let him say some words um, about his project. Nobody here uh, has to do this if they don't want to. He's going to go away and be back there. But if you want to share your thoughts and feelings, you know, he'd love to hear them. Uh, This is going to be a documentary. So you need to know that like it will be public. So if we have any safety concerns about somebody who's after us, we don't want to do this. Right. Uh, So on and so forth. And inevitably after that, opening five minutes, almost every hand in the room would shoot up to tell the wow. story. And there'd be a line. I'd never had enough. I never actually got through every woman interview that I wanted in, in all these different shelters because the line, wow. right? It was a safe place, a safe place to share. And they had things to share. And women are marginalized mm-hmm. everywhere in the world, including homelessness, right? Yeah. Um, and so I constantly, I hear about sexual assault and mm-hmm. all those things. I mean, maybe 75 yeah. different people t- talking about it, maybe more. So yeah. I've heard about it a lot. Uh, mm-hmm. And we talk about it in the film a bit. But I think it's an interesting question because I think sometimes certain stories need to be told by somebody from that culture. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And I don't know if it's my place to talk about that. Mm-hmm. You know? Um, so it's not a no. But I oh. bet there's a I bet there's a talented woman or man out there uh, who maybe has more experience with it and is more plugged into the community mm-hmm. that could tell that story. Um, yeah. Yeah. You know, and that's just, a, I don't know, because, but then there's, there's other stuff that I'm interested in working on that I don't have a ton of experience with. So mm-hmm. maybe that's a cop out. Maybe that's a cop out. I'm not sure. Um, but right now what I'm working on is uh, formerly, former, formerly incarcerated folks, you know, um, yeah. and, and I, I branched off of this other project, the government thing. And I've been working on that too. And that's talking to people who are spent 30 years in prison a piece and they go in wow. when they're 17 and they come out when they're 49 and what it's like and talking to them, their young selves and, yeah. and things like, and just talking about how incarceration is destroying America, especially black America. And it's getting mm-hmm. worse for black African-American women as well. And it already is. Yeah. Um, yeah. And talking oh, about yeah. that, but yeah, so I'm more yeah. in that line. I, I guess mm-hmm. I've having been around a lot of people who've been incarcerated. I've been incarcerated myself when I was younger. I've also oh, been homeless when I've been younger. Mm-hmm. Um, so maybe that's why it has more of an interest. I don't know. I, maybe that's a cop out. Maybe it's not. I'm not sure. Oh, no. no, no. I definitely agree with you. And like um, a guy that I interviewed, he was in prison for like 25 years, I think. But he was mm. wrong, wrongly convicted. And wow. he spent all of his years in prison. And mm. he ended up becoming a lawyer and like mm. getting all those people that were wrongly convicted out of prison. Like he got a lot mm. of people out of prison so far. At least, I wonder if he worked for the Innocence Project maybe then. Yeah, I don't know. I can mm. give you his information after this. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, um, <laughs> I want to thank you so much for coming on my podcast today and chatting with me today. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. <laughs> it was thanks for having me. I know uh, I'm infamous for just blah, 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 but, <laughs> no, you know. like you gave, you gave great information. Like it's very educational, and a lot of people mm. need to know these this kind of like they need to know. Mm. but uh, thank you so much yeah well and if and if i'm able to give a plug i would say check out so go to our websites www.theinvisibleclass.com that's mm-hmm. the film right watch the trailer and mm-hmm. then what we do with our screenings uh because remember in, at, at one point i mentioned that we try to make them um we make sure that we want them to do something for the homeless community right right like, you know right. 
but well, they educate general population. They help homeless service providers stuff. Mm-hmm. So what we do is we do almost entirely community screenings only. So mm-hmm. I didn't put it on Amazon. It's not on Netflix, right? Mm-hmm. It's only available through homeless service providers usually, right? right. Uh, now, anybody can ask me for it and I'll send it to them. But what we do is if somebody from Louisville comes up and says, hey, I want to see the film, I go, I'll send you a, co- a copy of the film. But why don't you reach out to a local homeless organization there and let them know that the filmmaker has made a film that he, it can be a fundraiser for your organization. It can mm-hmm. be a food donation, clothing, hygiene mm-hmm. kit donation thing for your place. You know, mm-hmm. and, and we, we create those events. And so I forget what we have, like 50 events now, but we've had thousands of pounds of, of food and clothing and hygiene kit stuff donated. We get volunteers for homeless service providers. You know what I mean? We do all this cool shit with the, with the, um, the screenings that's mm-hmm. community-based that you lose if it just enters the sea of the internet and nobody ever even knows it exists. So if you're out there, and you, uh, we do that for private businesses too, for employee yeah. trainings to educate them on how to work with the homeless community and stuff. So if you're out there and you come from any organization like that, or you might know of one, then why don't you reach out to me, the, uh, Josh at invisibleclass.com, at, or sorry, Josh at the invisibleclass.com, <laughs> right? Uh, info at the invisibleclass.com works too. Um, and uh, reach out and then, uh, you know, maybe we can link up with one of your organizations because we, that, that's the whole point is we try, we want to do, you know, say 700, 800 organizations before we're done. So, right, right, right. Yeah. All right. Cool. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs>